We're meeting under the overpass on fucking Figaro and Seventh. Everybody's coming. It's there's a big homeless encampment, but just did they're cool. Don't worry about them. They're fine. We're gonna party with them. All right, let's get started. Intro music. Welcome to Magic and Chill Podcast. Magic and Chill Magic and Chill Podcast. This is this is Welcome, dear Planeswalkers, to another enchanting episode of Magic and Chill. I'm Charlie, and joining me today are my co-host, Mark from Social Stash. Ethan of the motherfucking rats. Hey, everyone, it's great to be here uh, discussing all things magic. Absolutely. You know we're all about combining our love for this fantastic game with some chill vibes. That's right. And today's episode's no exception. We've got a trio of fantastic topics lined up that will have you thinking, rating, and choosing your top spells. And without further ado, let's dive into the first topic. All right, Planeswalkers, it's time to talk about an essential aspect of magic, or our magic community, uh, our local game stores, or for short, LGS. Um, so the question is, do you actively support your LGS? Why or why not? Absolutely not. It smells like used underwear and Fritos every time I go into an LGS. It's absolutely unbearable. Uh, supporting your LGS is vital. And it's not just about buying cards. It's about building a community of smelly individuals and keeping the magic spirit alive. We'll share our thoughts, stories, and maybe some ways you haven't thought of to show some love to your LGS. The LGS was like a big part of like my teenage years. Like I used to love going into LGS growing up. Mark, you you know the story. Uh, you know, it was called I'm Comics. I'm Comics was the greatest place on earth growing up as a small child. You realize my mother wanted me out of the house. I mean, please, God, leave is a very frequent phrase I would hear quite often. Um... I'm Comics was down the street. We're from Whittier, California. Not familiar. If you're not familiar with the land, it's quite treacherous. Uh, regardless, um, we grew up in Whittier, venturing to I'm Comics. Now, it was owned by a man named Earl. He was a mystery shrouded in infamy. This man, I would see going there as a small child. So... Sold used Game Boy games, used Magic the Gathering cards, new Magic the Gathering cards, comics of all sorts. I actually bought my Dragon Ball Z comics from Earl, personally. The store was remarkable. The best thing about it, my good men, was just across the way there was a donut shop. Where you could purchase copious amounts of sugar-laced treats to consume and head back to the magic shop to uh, fight amongst your friends and trade lotus petals for mere Sarah angels. Uh, 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 another thing that shoots to my mind so quickly. Okay, I'm Comics had a couple arcade games tucked away in the corner. Uh, Marvel versus Capcom, okay? Men, men were created on that game. <laughs> In that yeah. store. No, no. Men, okay? We are not men here on this podcast. We have lost I'm Comics. I'm Comics turned into some kind of flower store. It's a yeah. disgrace. They sell flowers from the from the ground, from the earth. What I had didn't I had it... heard that they that they moved to Frankensons, right? Didn't it somehow to some capacity okay. didn't they so, move their shop to Frankensons? So the his so the history of I'm Comics, like um when it closed down, yeah, I think they transferred most of their stuff to Frank Sons, but I know that guy, Sean Murphy or whatever. I don't know if we should say oh. his full name. Yeah, so that he, guy, Sean. Did he shuffle he, and cut? Yeah, he built shuffle and cut, which. That's actually an amazing was, store, and I remember meeting no, Sean. You, oh, my God, amazing. I have to interject. I always, ask I, him to pull, I, always, I always ask him to pull my cards, dude, and I go there, and then they'll be like, 
we only have one person in the front and then they won't pull my card so i just leave so i don't support wanted them. to I'm... date my you sister can... oh yeah. oh no i was yeah. gonna say maybe they can sponsor the podcast but if you want to date his sister, no 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 no, no. no. if yeah, you want yeah he wanted Let's... to date my sister it was unbelievable i was a small child yeah. Getting magic cards and he <laughs> out my sister. My sister is many years older than me, and so was this individual. He actually worked at Time Comics, you know, underneath Earl, obviously, selling cards and selling used was it, video games. Was his He's name actually, was his name Earl? I don't remember his name. I thought it was like Richard. It was Earl. Was was it Earl? Yeah, he no, had glasses it was, it was on. Earl, yeah, he had glasses. He had glasses on like a yeah, mustache. It was Chuck. You are Chuck yeah, was the, another guy. I remember you Chuck because about a core memory of my brain, sir. His name was Earl. I remember him. I have he has been in my dreams, in and out of my dreams, touching me and dancing with me. We go through the fields together, both of us. Glasses, Kingdom of the Rats. Right. Um, I mean, I think the donut shop, like you painted a really good picture of like the ambiance there i just think looking back now like that guy chuck and earl um like those guys uh probably uh more than they know influenced our early childhood you know like it like it's super cool like if that place wasn't there i would have been a different person you know what i mean like honestly and so my whole thing is just like i hope that the kids now are, are having just as as filling experiences at an LGS. They probably are. I mean, there there's there's some epic games going down every every Friday night magic, you know? And the vibes obviously certainly different, but I just think that it was super cool. I wouldn't change it for any, like I wouldn't change it a bit going back. I think it was an excellent LGS. Um Yeah, and so I had even forgot about that donut shop. That was clutch. I think the most fond memory I have is kind of a funny story. So um, I remember there's a guy named Aaron that worked there. And so uh, while we're playing Warhammer, so this is non Magic the Gathering, but anyways, we're playing uh, Warhammer and all this stuff. And he was painting models and stuff like that. And then when he was like cutting, you know, you have to cut the <clears throat> cut the plastic and stuff like that. Uh, he slid his wrist and uh, he started bleeding profusely all over the table. And they had to call an ambulance because he was like going into shock. It was, it was pretty funny. Well, it wasn't. It kind of sucked, but it was like we we're just little kids. Like, oh shit! Like this guy's bleeding all over these Warhammer models, you know? Yeah, like me and Jake. That's our like fondest memory of that place. Also, beating like all these nerds, like not at Magic, but we'd play Warhammer and we'd smoke them. We just like the intent to just destroy their whole, like their whole well being. Like we just flank them and just destroy them, team up on them. It was, it was hilarious. That was our main goal. Yeah. Just, I think Jake always had that mentality of whatever game he played, he just wanted to like pub pub stomp the person, I guess. So Warhammer is one of those things. We just go in there and just it was hilarious. Just, those those are fond memories yeah. that I Well, I guess just to circle back again to to the question and, and, and it's just supporting your your LGS. Honestly, um just to be more on the nose with this question, I think that the sad thing is that the biggest margin for these owners are actually probably the soda and the Doritos and the chips and the snacks that you would buy from them. I think it would be something like if you were to break it down, I think it's going to be snacks that they have the the biggest margin on, right? Because they, they can go to Costco and, and stock up and then um, it's on for five bucks or whatever. I think, yeah. And then second... I think second would be like probably games, like uh, like more like tabletop games and stuff like that. I think the margins are probably closer to thirty percent, forty percent. And then the last thing, which is probably unfortunate because it's it's probably what we buy the most, it's going to be sealed product, right? So the boosters, the boxes, margins are extremely extremely slim on those. And so, and so um, that begs the question. Obviously, you're not going to go in there and buy snacks, right? Like no one's going to go in there and, and buy a ton of snacks just just purely to to give them money and no there, there's a lot there's a lot of uh like yeah lgs is like well the ones i've been to like um they kind of divert into other like other games to suffice you know like they have to they got to bring in money right so their main thing is like not sealed product because you know it's and all there's a lot of new tcgs coming out like i think I, there's this game called sorcery tcg that's a kickstarter yeah that man love sorcery pretty, yeah, it seems pretty good just from, I think, Charlie, you were sharing me some 
some videos and I like the gameplay. So, um, yeah, that. Now it's time for some card discussion. Each of us brought a card today to rate. Is it top tier, mid, or jank? Yeah, and the best part is we've kept our card choices secret from each other. So get ready for some crazy surprises. So I'll go first because I've got uh, probably the biggest dick. So um, we're looking at my choice, which is going to be called No Mercy. Four mana, two black and two colorless. It is an enchantment. Okay, obviously I'm going to choose black. Because Kingdom of the Rats mostly plays in mono black because that's how we row. And what this enchantment does is whenever a creature deals damage to you, destroy it. And so I love this effing card because it protects you from a lot of creature shenanigans. Um, a lot of creatures will have when they attack or deal damage uh this triggers or that triggers or blah 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 mickey mouse fucking bullshit and so when you have this out you know it really creates a hurdle uh your opponents are going to want to remove this enchantment first or they're going to lose their big expensive creature that they have dropped uh very disrespectfully on the, to the battlefield and I just think it's such great protection. It's in mono black, which is the supreme color and the best color. And if you play anything else, go fuck yourself. And yeah, I mean, that's my choice. And uh, let, what do you guys think about it? Okay, go for it. To my left. Oh, um, no, I've, I've seen Corey play this card. Yeah, it's a good card. Uh, it's a good defensive card, so um, I know it's like pretty much in gameplay. Yeah, you can't go to that opponent because then you're gonna lose your guy. But um, there's ways around it. Uh, in destructibility, and then uh, you because it says destroy. Yeah, so if I have something equipped with indestructible, if I give a pseudo indestructible with an instant, uh, like uh, that would bypass that. But um. It is a good in a four player match it's it's oh, shit. good. You know. Um but yeah, I like the card. I like the flavor of it. It makes sense in mono black, you know. So if you're going for like flavor and like the art's pretty epic too and all all the different styles, but um yeah, I like speaking, it. Um, hey, speaking of flavor because we cover all things magic. Let me read the flavor because I don't know how a lot of you are, but I love the little quotations on the bottom and like the little um, you know, uh, quotes about the creature the flavor or, yeah, man, or whatever. Yeah. The flavor. So anyways, no mercy, leave no survivors. Let the other world see what befalls those who attempt to resist the might of Phyrexia quoted from Shieldred. Is that not Tires. the fucking sickest thing? Sounds like you're in church. Like you're a pastor. I you're am. Just like, you're just like. Brethren. Where are you? Where are you? Brethren. I don't go to church. Where are you? Again. <laughs> I think it would own uh, aggro, right? It's going to own a lot of aggro. It's going to try to come out and swing at you. And so it's going to deter a lot of people from choosing you as a as a target. Indeed. It's going to sp specifically own like zombies and tokens. And, Indeed. Um, and 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 goblin so do, should, should we each rate it and then it, it'll be like a cumulative rating then at the end like i feel like a lot of cards are gonna i think a lot of good cards and are gonna be called mid i think as a fourth as a four drop and mono black it's good so i'm gonna say top tier because what i mean you know what i mean like as a four drop Thank there's you. a lot of things that you can you can drop as a four but I think it's good. Like it's no, no, no less or better, you know. So yeah, I'll I'll give it top tier. That nice. Um, I love it. I I say uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say top tier, but I would say mid. It is a good strategy, <laughs> but there is a lot of removal for that. It one, it like your opponent has to give up that removal, but you know, there's ways around it. So I'd say mid for me. And I will punish you for saying such. 
Okay, who's next? So, uh, my card is an instant, so it's in the color blue. So, it's an offer you can't refuse. So, for one blue, uh, instant, counter target non-creature spell. Its controller creates two token treasure tokens. So, um, the reason why I chose this card... Um, as one is an instant for one, yeah, your opponent gets two treasure tokens, but you can literally set them back a turn or two, you know, or if you need to, uh, I use it as a defensive spell. Cause like, um, I use it in my Siddhar Jabari deck, which is Esper color. So I run it to, uh, so if someone like targets my commander, I can, you know, play this counter that non-creature spell, which is most likely removal or something weird like that. So it's a good defensive. Um, and for an uncommon, uh, it, it, can get slotted in a lot of decks for one instant. It's it's pretty good, man. Yeah. Uh fuck yeah it is. Uh like I said, I don't I love magic, but I don't follow it closely. I hadn't heard of this card. This is ridiculous. You get a counter of a non creature spell for only one blue. Yeah, they get two creature. Who gives a shit? You can counter a game winning early a yeah. game winning card. Like that's it's much better than the card I chose. I'm uh, uh, extremely upset, and I'm going to put this card into top tier. Cause the fuck? Are you kidding me? That's re- that's ridiculous. An offer you can't refuse. Yeah. Um, I think I don't. Obviously, I don't like giving my opponent uh two free mana to spend however they they wish. I don't like that it's going to be potentially. A dead card in my hand if it if i draw it in my opening hand it's probably going to be a dead card for a long time i don't like that i don't like that it's reactive so i guess all counter spell, spells are right wait, wait 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 if you draw it in your opening hand why would it be a dead card you could counter er- something early massive like something that they something so important like a super important enchantment that they that they put out you could counter it so early oh uh, like a salt like a like a yeah you could be salty you could be the salty yeah are you kidding yeah, me that That's would so, suck, it's so top tier it's so ridiculous it it does it does it it is a weird card. When I first read this card, I was like, "What well, do you counter spell?" But you give them two treasure tokens. That's like free mana, right? Yeah, it, you're right. You're gonna be able to to get rid of their soul, soul ring or fucking mana crypt or whatever. Right? You're not gonna counter something like just nor like a creature, like a simple creature or something, or maybe that simple defense thing. Mm. You know, you're not gonna use it for that. You're gonna use it for something that's like, oh, holy shit. Like what the fuck? I needed that. You're gonna you're gonna look for something crucial to their to their play, and you're gonna yeah. you're gonna counter it. And all you're giving them is two mana. I mean, that's how do we say all you're giving them? That's massive, but it's not massive if they've lost some a piece that they need. Yeah. All I, right. I, I'll I'll go with I'll go with top tier as well. well that was a pretty good pick, Mark. It. I didn't mean to do that. Sometimes I overpower <laughs> the the kingdom of the rats. Apologizes. We did not mean to convince you in such a way. We are we are very we, we we value the opinions of others very much so, but you are very very much right to agree with us. So I think it's a cool card. So the card that I came to share, and I guess uh, I'm just I'm just sharing cards that I like. Um, I didn't take in consideration of like, well, is this top tier or is this mid or jank? As cool. you guys can decipher for yourself, Adley. it's called Waste Not. One colorless, one black. It's a black enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Whenever an opponent discards a card or land or discards a land card, add a two black mana to your mana pool. Whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. So you're getting something um, whenever something's discarded. So obviously the synergy here is suggesting to play it with discard. I think um it's really I, mean, I just love this card. I love playing it with with tiny bones. Uh Shieldred is like obviously my go to uh model black commander right now. Tiny bones is fun. So I've been playing this card a lot lately and that's why I brought it. I, I love it. Yeah, I think it's a good card. Um it for on the nose, like like you said, for discard, uh one, the CMC value is really good for enchantment, so you can get it out early if you're a like tier grid or sheldred or anything like that because you know for two mana 
and it's enchantment and you're getting three abilities you know so and you could trigger you could probably combo out with this if you can because you know you're making a 2-2 two -two black creature you can even start a combo if you have like phyrexian altar or you know like um stuff like that so it's a good card for two and for what you can do with it i'm thinking oh yeah you can do a lot with this card if you're building it in the right deck for like i'm all about synergy so it synergizes with certain commanders and it's not just one commander so yeah yeah so yeah Togra, Sheldred, like everything like that to draw a card so uh tiny bones yeah so there's a lot of cards so i'm gonna say top tier for me based on the synergy with commanders in that color you know so all right i'll take it kingdom of the rats what do you think the kingdom of the rats are not pleased okay we are in a <laughs> difficult situation so we want to uh be courteous and friendly to our friends here on the podcast but in the opinion of the kingdom of the rats this does not belong in top tier or mid uh i'm gonna go hard jank hard jank i'm gonna pull my jank i'm gonna pull my jank super hard i'm Whoa. gonna uh, i'm gonna do all the things that you see in the videos jank, so you wouldn't it, put this in your deck bro this uh, no 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 if it was a discard focused deck i would absolutely use it then you're getting an incredible value two mana for an enchantment it's a difficult zone to remove and you're getting all these things for discard but you know i i guess I just don't have a ton of discard. I mean, I don't have a Tiny Bones deck, even though I think Tiny Bones is the fucking shit. Uh, who's who's some more discard? I just, you know, if I was playing one v one, I would have a lot of discard, but I tend to not play one v one. It's more like four player games, so I just don't run a lot of like targeted discard or even like global uh -huh. discard, and so I just wouldn't see any value from whether the fuck this shit was called. I for the Kingdom of the Rats has forgotten what it's called. And so, yeah, I'm going to put it in hard tank. Even though you chose my card in top tier, I feel bad. Kingdom of the Rats feels bad, but they're choosing jank. It's always intriguing to hear the different perspectives on card evaluations. And remember, dear listeners, what's top tier to one person might be jank to another. And I think it's time to hear a word from our sponsors. Yeah. Yo, 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 what the Phyrex is going on, Multiversers? This your boy, Jace Bellerin, coming in at you from my new used car lot located in the Dominaria Plain. I bought this used car lot. It's now called Jace's Magic Motors. And we have some really great vehicles from across the multiverse. Our prices are so low, they will leave you absolutely spellbound. Like this, like this. Lightly used 1997 Weatherlight Skyship has low miles and will come equipped with anti counter spell technology already installed. I'm not just a master of magic, I'm also a master of incredible deals and low financing. I'm just in like a really tough place right now and it would be really great like if you it would just mean the world to me if you guys could just come down here you know check it out test drive some really fantastic used automobiles so uh thanks again and uh god bless there you have it um yeah jace jace's car lot um you sponsor the show yeah, that place is super sick. Uh, you know, Kingdom of the Rats here. I actually test drove a 1989 CRX that had like a B16 swap with a turbo mm -hmm. in it. We've reached the last topic for today, and it's a fun one. Each of us will be picking our top three sorcery spells. Sorceries have a unique charm in magic. They often bring a game-changing element to the table, and we all have our favorites. So, let's share our top three sorcery spells, and remember, there are no right or wrong choices here. It's all about what you love. So, Mark, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, my top three sorceries, and these are just sorceries I've been playing recently. Um, so, my first pick was, damn, for double black uh sorcery destroy target creature a creature destroyed this way cannot can't be regenerated and then you could overload it for two colorless and two uh white mana and then you take out uh pretty much you get to overload it and it becomes all creatures 
um, instead of one oh, target it's got creature. White though, its overload cost has, has white yeah. in it. So for me, this card is just uh, useful because most of the decks I have just splashes black. So like I play Mardu and Esper a lot recently, so it it fits in the card. I can, it's like a uh, toolbox card because I'm always about like cards that can do multiple things. So pretty much I could take out one target or overload it to destroy the whole board, stuff like that. So. That's my pick number one. Been on that then, board as he destroys it many times. Yeah. So second second one, it's probably all our favorite cards. It's a sorcery, a colorless and black, uh, demonic tutor. So search your library for a card, put that card in your hand, then shuffle your deck. So um yeah, this card needs no explanation. It's the probably one of the best tutors in Commander or Magic in general, so uh, yeah, it's just a useful card. And then um, third card, uh, it's probably a salty card, but and it's gaining a lot of popularity right now. So farewell. So it's four colorless, two white, and sorcery. Choose one or more. Exile all artifacts. Exile all creatures. Exile all enchantments. Exile all graveyards. So pretty much, like I said, I'm all about toolbox cards. So uh, this one, you could choose all of them. You could choose two. Holy shit. Was yeah. Yeah. No, but that's cool, right? Because if if you have something in your graveyard, you know, you just choose not to to blow up the graveyard. If you, if maybe your board is really built up with enchantments, you don't do that one. Like if you're just trying to wipe out creatures, you can always do that. If you don't, if there's like a really nasty artifact out, you can you can include the artifact thing. So yeah, yeah. no, I like it. I dig it. Yeah, yeah, it's a salty card. It could set back a game. So that's another reason why I don't think uh, casual oh, players play it. Right. Um, it is. And also, uh, CEDH players. I don't. I don't know if they use this much because CEDH is like faster pace, so it's it's like it costs a lot to come out. But you know, for hyper casual games, bro, this this is the this is yeah. the one right here. I mean, we so don't play are... CEDH. I don't. No. Think. I think we have some CEDH cards. I I, don't, I run a lot of tutors. Uh, so the closest I well, run is like we do. tutors and fetch lands. So yeah, yeah, but we don't do like. No That's take backsies and like, you know, we're not like we're super anal with with the rules like a lot of times, you know. No, and I yeah. think that's a big, you know, that's a big thing with CDH is you kind of you you stick to the letter of the law, sort of, so to speak. Cool, man. I like I like those three sorceries you brought. Look, thanks, thanks. Yes, I hate them of the wrath. I don't really like them, but I uh, have some affection mm-hmm. for Mark. His spells have have been too have been too difficult to deal with in the game. So I I uh I rank them not favorable. So Corey, what's your what's your top sorceries? Who in the fuck is Corey? Who 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 are you <laughs> oh, speaking oh, about? I'm not I don't oh, know who that sorry. is. A A O R, bro. K O R. What's yours uh God damn it, Mark. You can you continue to impress me, you son of a bitch. Kingdom of the Rats is Cole. You weren't calling me Corey. You were calling me Cole. Kingdom of Rats. God damn it, sir. I love you. Okay. It is my turn. Here we go, sir. So here we go. Uh, the Kingdom of the Rats has thought very digi- diligently about this topic. Uh, I was given this task only days ago. My dear friends, Charlie and Mark were told, uh, Kingdom of the Rats, core. <laughs> you must choose sorceries, three sorceries that are your favorite. And so, good dear sir, my very first one, the first sorcery, the Kingdom of the Rats has chosen for their three sorceries that they favor most, above all, is Sign in Blood. We are looking at two black pips for a sorcery. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. What more can you ask for? Two cards... For only two black, fuck the life. I don't care. I'm playing mono black. You can suck a Zendikar out of my fart hole. Uh, my next sorcery is temporal extortion. Very uh, incredible sorcery. It, it is true magic at its best. Um, what does it cost? Four swamp. Four black pip. You bitch asses. You can't be playing this in other colors. You can't, because you you don't have four black. The fuck out of here. Okay? 
War, mono black, okay, for a sorcery. You ready for this? When you play Temporal Extortion, any player may put half his or her life, may pay half his or her life, round it up. If a player does, counter it. Okay, so whatever, it can be countered, but they got to lose half their life. I'm into that. <laughs> you want to lose half your life? What if they got like, what if it's they like have five spell. life? God damn it, Charlie. It is not time oh, for comments. Yeah, right that was, and, yeah and, it'd be like two, rat, right? Or three. Even the rats are not taking comments right now. I don't know why Charlie and Mark are speaking. Okay. A uh, player <laughs> does not counter temporal extortion. And then after that, take an extra turn after this one, dick fuck. Bro, this is ridiculous. Uh, this is like blue shit in mono black. I love it. Let me read the flavor because the Kingdom of the Rats did not read the sign and bullet flavor, but we will in momentarily. Here is the flavor for temporal extortion. The scythe of time or my blade at your throat. The choice is yours. Holox. Stronghold Racketeer. So that is obviously something he said. He was giving this individual the choice. The scythe of time. Obviously an extra turn for moi. Or my blade at your throat. You dirty, dirty whore. Okay, <laughs> I want to go back to Sight and Blood. What was the flavor? Okay, uh, just remind Sight and Blood to black. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Here we go. Flavor. It's always my brightest students who make the worst decisions. <laughs> God, I love that. That's uh, so beautiful. Okay, my final card. I know I've taken much more time than my other hosts, and I apologize for such. The kingdom of the rats just loves words and to speak them. Anyhow, my next card, sorcery. One colorless and one black. One swamp, obviously. Okay, it is feed the swarm. Yes, 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 yes. Target creature or... Destroy, sorry, destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent converted mana cost. Absolutely wonderful. What do we have here? We have enchantment removal in mono black. My God, dear sir, something we do not have in my side of the neighborhood. And I am so grateful to be given it in this uh, card from Zendikar. Uh, I wish it was an instant. It is not. Fuck you. Uh, I will wait for my turn to remove your enchantment and take the life lost from it. But you know, everybody knows how difficult enchantments are. They can be so monumental to somebody's game pieces and so difficult to deal with. And uh, the, the flavor on this card, if I might, uh, because I love flavor, it is everything. Uh, if you haven't tried Indian food, I recommend it. It is very flavorful. But here we go. The flavor. Feed the swarm. On vile wings and bloody wind, the swarm will rise. Skyclave inscription. And with that, I oh. yield my three choices, gentlemen. Uh, that was good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, the kingdom of the rats mm. thanks you, sir. And yeah. we, uh, we, we will have you in our, our rat prayers tonight. Okay, well then that's it's it's for it's time for me to have a, a small segment which I discussed earlier with the gentleman and was pre-approved with producers. So I want everybody to just comment when comment is needed. And in other terms, uh, you shall uh, just listen to the wisdom that the kingdom of the rats has forged together in his time of dumpster diving. So what we're going to be talking about today? Okay, kingdom of the rats, right? We are rats. That is what we believe in, that is what we are, that is what we strive to be every day, and so what is our enemy, you might ask? Well, it's a cat. Uh, it's a cat. A cat nightmare. Our number one enemy, we have many, as you can imagine. We, uh, we are very hated all across the lands, uh, but cat, our number one enemy, and so a deck that the kingdom of the rats cannot despise is Luris. So I'm here to talk some hey. tech deck with you, not deck tech, because that's some other podcast we don't give a shit about. We do tech deck. You know those little skateboards? Like a while ago? When we were, <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're called tech decks, right? Well, we do tech deck, but it's not the little skateboards. I'm sorry. I just use that. It's it's tech technical information of our decks. So it's a tech deck. Huh? 
Okay, so that's cool, and it's not infringement on copyright or anything. So everybody, yeah, yeah, kind of kind of fucking chill from that. And so what we're doing here is we're doing some technical uh, information on our deck. And so we've got lure skateboards. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll the skateboards as well. I'll get to that. But for now, it's just going to be one of our main enemies. Okay, Luris. It's a cat nightmare. If you're not familiar with it, it is a kind of a jank deck. This is not a popular commander deck. Um, but let let me dive in here. Okay. So it is one colorless, and then two pips, either a plains or a swamp. So a white or black. So you're looking at three total. But the other two pips can be white or black. I don't know how to describe that. It's like the combo pip, white or black. But yes, yeah, so we're looking at three. So obviously this is Ols off, which is um, one of the few colors the Kingdom of the Rats will entertain. We must face them diligently as they are our, our enemies, even though they use some of our color. Regardless, okay, it's a legendary cat nightmare. And uh, it has lifelink. It's a 3-2 creature. It is used as the commander because it's a legendary creature. And once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard. Now that is absolutely devastating. Every turn, you can bring something back from the graveyard as long as it's 2 or less. Now this creature can be used as a companion, which is like... Um, or you can have, uh, like, another thing. Yeah. But I don't know if that really applies to Commander, and you wouldn't want to do it anyways, because then only each permanent in your deck could have two or less cards, which mm. works well for its synergy, but you want to have other cards in this deck that are not just two or less. So just ignore that. You're just yeah. going to use the other thing, which is once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard. Okay, so I brought a couple cards here, just a couple that are in the deck. So obviously you're going to have some swamps in the deck, you're going to have some islands, and you're going to have a bunch of, like, however you build it, you know, black or white, or is off, whatever you want to do. But these are some guarantees because they just will fuck everybody. They will fuck everybody on the battlefield. <laughs> There's, they, they will cause quite a difficulty and quite um, a headache for everyone dealing with you. So the first one I want to bring up is Seal Away. Okay, so this is an enchantment. It costs one colorless and one planes. It can come out in a flash, which is awesome. So it's got instant speed, even though it's an enchantment. And when Seal Away enters the battlefield, exile target tapped creature and opponent controls until Seal Away leaves the battlefield. So you can imagine, since it's a permanent, it can come out and it seals away a tapped creature, right? You can get, way, get rid of a big creature that somebody's using against you or just a big issue on the battlefield. It can come out instantly, right? Once it, get, it, mm-hmm. once it gets removed, it goes to the graveyard, and because of Luris's tr- uh, ability, you could cast it from the graveyard still. So it's just in your hand again, and you could seal away another creature, and it'll sit out on the battlefield until it's removed again, where you could then cast it again on another turn from your from your graveyard. So it's just a reoccurring nightmare for people. Uh, uh, same thing with Seal of Cleansing. Costs the same amount, one colorless, one planes. It's an enchantment. Comes out. And you can sacrifice it at any time. Instant speed. It cannot be countered once it's out. They could counter you actually casting it. But once it's out and you're going to sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment, it can then not be countered. Because it's like an activated ability. It's not a spell you're casting. Which is really, really cool. Goes to your graveyard. And you can cast it any time again with Luris because it's once during each of your turns. You may cast a permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard. Sac- and just to read it, sacrifice seal of cleansing, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Won't take out a creature, but an artifact or enchantment is so huge in somebody's like build synergy or whatever. And just to read its flavor, I am the purifier, the light that clears all shadows. So that basically says suck it, uh, get rid of your artifact or enchantment. Okay, next thing is the selfless spirit. One colorless and one planes. It's a 2-1 creature with flying. You can sacrifice it any time, and when you do, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. So you can keep everybody alive when somebody does something stupid, when they think they're being cool, when they want to kill everybody, or kill one of your people, or if you want to send in a big attack and you want to make sure everybody's indestructible, you could just sack your selfless spirit, but guess what? It's only cost 2 to bring out, 
And since it's a permanent that costs two or less, you can bring it back out again next turn and stack everybody, stack them again, make everybody indestructible, basically making your board state very tough to deal with. And the very last one, because I know the Kingdom of the Rats has taken up so much time and I do apologize, my dear sirs, but this next one is a real doozy. I have saved him for last. He is Kami of the False Hope. He is a creature spirit, a 1-1 one, one, permanent, obviously, for only one plane to come out. And what his ability is, is you can sacrifice him at any time. And Kami of the False Hope then prevents all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So you can essentially keep yourself alive forever. If you're fighting somebody who's hitting you with combat damage, you just sack Kami. He goes to your graveyard and you bring him back next turn for one planes because Luris allows you to cast one uh, during a one uh, permanent spell, two or less from your graveyard every single turn. And they can remove Luris and you just bring him back, obviously, with your commander tax. He only costs three, which is a very low cost. It's hard to get him up to be expensive. And in the deck, you know, you want to really re you really want to protect Luris and take advantage of that uh, two or less from your graveyard. So Mark has faced this deck many times, and I'd love to hear his opinion on uh, the little bit of tech deck that we did. Um, I like the deck. It's hard to beat. I think your your setup for this deck is like annoying. So because you can just keep on pumping out two mana value permanents. Um, it would be a cool deck if you made it if you stacks it out. That'd be a pretty like all stacks cards. Indeed, and indeed. What what I mostly focused on was more aristocrat. You know, so when I sacrifice like Kami, yeah. there's other triggers going off where everybody lose one life and I gain one it, life, and then. Yeah. yeah, but I, I like your death idea of doing would stats good. as well. Dude, do death and taxes. We You're should not... re re uh, reinvent this deck. Yeah, do death and taxes because that's a popular uh, you know build. So you can always just bring back your stack pieces and your uh, taxing pieces stuff like that. But yeah, I face this deck. It's Beep. it's it's Beep. I it's annoying. Uh, it's a, it's one of your. Uh, I remember um, in, earlier in commander is it's a pretty good deck man i like I, I hated facing it but i like the the color pie of this deck so so that i was thinking a card you could put in there uh on thin ice it's one white it's a snow enchantment aura and it says you enchant a snow land you control when on thin ice enters the battlefield exile target creature and opponent controls until on thin ice leaves the battlefield so pretty whoa, much whoa, this whoa. is a hard lock that's for really a commander. good yeah yeah you can't you the commander's stuck so you exile the commander and as long as you have snow enchantment, like a snow land, and if they don't have land destruction, uh, you just dis you just ruin someone else's someone's commander game. Indeed, so. wow! You and see, it's I'm, kind of a I'm stealthy card. Glad I discussed this because he's well, just a card that the kingdom of the they could target the enchantment though, right? They could target the enchantment. They don't have to blow up the land. They could target oh, yeah. the yeah. They could yeah. do either, but it's it's enchantment still locked it out. Own. Yeah, it's they're hard to deal with. I thought I I posted in the chat. I posted um. I have ghost form, one black. Uh, it's an enchantment aura. Enchant creature or planeswalker you control, but enchanted enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile. Return that card to the battlefield under your control, Ooh. which just recurs whatever gets killed. Right, so you can continue to put this on Loris himself just to keep him out. Oh, dude, so that's like, actually a pretty good basically, combo. Basically, yeah. So basically, once you get the the two cards, like they'll have to burn two. Uh, spells on Loris to kill it or else this thing will keep recurring it right and then you can keep I don't know how that works like I don't know when this goes off the stack but like I don't want even want to get that that much into the weeds but I just think it's really good you can basically just keep your commander out the well Loris yeah rat, we'll have to look into that yeah on Loris thing he yeah, would just bring think... it out either upkeep or in, in step doesn't matter when so it's just each of your turns mm -hmm. so yeah that card's actually really good in that deck it's like super protection. So I was gonna bring this this topic, but this, uh, you know, I've been really into these rip and shifts, bro. Like on TikTok, so um, you can get some good deals on there. Yeah, yeah. It's so like the shipping's good, or you, they a lot of these TikTok content people do kind of better deals than LGS is, in my opinion. Yeah, it's funny you. Yeah, it's funny you bring this up because yeah, I happen to run a a rip and ship myself. 
Um, it's a lot of fun. I rip on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 Central Time. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. We've been ripping open some uh, incredible cards, incredible value. What sucks about it is that, like, you know, like, I really like magic so much that I... Yes, you do it's that. It's almost hard for me to send the cards out and, you know... I don't know, but didn't it's a lot of fun. I, I've been didn't, enjoying it. Didn't someone open, uh, I think you posted, uh, Jewel yes. Lotus? Jewel full, Lotus. Like, yeah, someone was it Jewel the... Lotus. Someone... It was full art. It was, uh... It was full art, hollow foil, but it wasn't Ooh. like the, yeah, oh the top tier one. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, obviously, it wasn't serialized. Uh, but it was good. Um, we also opened up that uh, confetti rustic study. Yeah, that one's like, Nuts. dude, that one. That the yeah, the rats just want to like... interject. The uh, jeweled lotus lurk works really good in, in the Luris deck as well. That's a permanent and... cost zero. And you can oh, you just oh, keep sweet. bringing it back, yeah. Oh, Dude, Loris yeah. is good. It makes me want to build one. Mm -hmm. All right, and with that, we've reached the end of another magical episode of Magic and Chill. Thanks for joining us today, and we love sharing our thoughts and stories with you, fellow planeswalkers. I accidentally closed the script, so you guys can suck my ass. I hope uh, you uh, out. Yeah. We'll talk to you guys next week. Before we sign off, we want to give a big thanks to our listeners. Your support is what keeps this show alive. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on social media for more magic and chill vibes. Until next time, may your hands be filled with your favorite cards and your draws always be in your favor. Magic and chill magic. And that wraps up another enchanting episode of Magic and Chill. We hope you've had as much fun as we have exploring the fascinating world of magic, the gathering. Don't forget, fellow planeswalkers, you can stay connected with us by following our social media accounts on TikTok, Threads, Instagram, and YouTube. All the links can be found in the description of this podcast. And for even more magic, consider joining our vibrant Discord channel, where you can chat with fellow listeners, share deck ideas, and dive deeper into the world of magic. Before we go, we have a humble request for you, our amazing listeners. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean the world to us if you shared magic and chill with your friends, family, and your playgroup. Your support helps us continue to bring you the content you love. Until next time, keep shuffling those decks. May your draws be ever in your favor, and always remember to keep it salty.